It's not just the message, it's the messenger. It was a very interesting choice this year. He really, though, stood out to us as someone who has changed the tone and the perception and the focus of one of the world's largest institutions. Pope Francis has graced magazine covers, attained the glow of celebrity, giving him reach far beyond his flock of 1.2 billion Catholics. As the papacy continues to make the rounds in an effort to get the nations to unite in a global agenda, aggressively striving for a unity of church and state, Pope Francis also has made tremendous efforts in trying to unite all of the religious bodies together. And one of the points in which he's trying to unite them is in a rejection of fundamentalism. He would also like us to combat those who believe in it. In this article here, Pope Francis declares fundamentalism a sickness. But wait, let's take a look at what fundamentalism is. According to the Oxford Dictionary, we read that the primary definition of fundamentalism is thus, a form of religion, especially Islam or Protestant Christianity, that upholds belief in the strict literal interpretation of scripture. In other words, if you believe the words of the Bible are not just a fairy tale or a storybook, and you believe in things like a literal creation or a literal exodus and other such things, you are a fundamentalist and according to Pope Francis, you have a sickness. And the Pope is now advising even the state power to be warned against you. In his speech to Congress, here is what he said. Our world is increasingly a place of violent conflict, hatred and brutal atrocities, committed even in the name of God and of religion. We know that no religion is immune from forms of individual delusion or ideological extremism. This means that we must be especially attentive to every type of fundamentalism, whether religious or of any other kind. Wow, this is coming from the head of an institution that is guilty of taking the lives of more than 50 million people. If anyone's not familiar with the history of the Roman Catholic Church and the millions that were slaughtered and killed by her for not accepting her doctrines during the Dark Ages, it's time to get familiar with history because this history was predicted in the Bible. It wasn't just a few thousand that she killed. And the Pope definitely is an enemy of the scriptures because it exposes him as the man of sin. Please see the video in the description called The Man of Sin Revealed for more on this topic. Following his visit to the Middle East as Pope last month, the pontiff criticized fundamentalism in Christianity, Islam, and Judaism as a form of violence. Quote, he said, A fundamentalist group, even if it kills no one, even if it strikes no one, is violent. The mental structure of fundamentalism is violence in the name of God. Maybe the Pope has come up with his own definition of violence, because certainly to kill 50 million people during the Dark Ages was violence. Not only was it violent, but some of the ways in which these things happened were the most cruel and vicious that the world has ever seen. The violence always originates with the intolerant because they are the ones who seek after political power in an effort to silence their critics. And this is what Pope Francis has been doing. Since Pope Francis has been in power, he's been seeking to bring together many of the religious institutions and many of the political institutions. So the protest has been over for 15 years. And I get a bit cheeky here, because I challenge my Protestant pastor friends. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? Maybe we now we're all Catholics again. <laughs> but we are reformed. We're Catholic in the universal sense. We are not protesting. The protest is over. The protest is over. We need to throw as much resources and energy into the Ministry of Reconciliation as we do to the Ministry of Evangelization. Father, we, we answer his request. And since we know not how to pray for him as we ought other than to 
agree with him in his quest and in and his, his, his heart for the unity of the body of Christ. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Alá. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. En New York last year, he was the main speaker at the United Nations on September 25th. But further, he is also a key figure in bringing together many of the religions, and this was part of the schedule during his New York visit. The Pope joined hundreds of leaders of different faiths to talk about healing. Together, he led a prayer of peace for a violent world. Peace in the hearts of all men and women, and peace among the nations. He says he witnessed Pope Francis gracefully combining two contrasting passions in his effort to bring all religions together. To bring all religions together. The words may sound different, but the Pope gathered them into one voice. Representatives of the Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, Sikh, Native American, Jewish, Islamic, and Christian communities of New York City, I renew to you our welcome and our joy at your visit. Welcome, Holy Father. We, representatives of the world religions, in this great city of New York, gather to offer words of comfort and Intolerance prayer. and ignorance fueled those who attacked this place. The courage of today's gathering distinguishes us from the opponents of religious freedom as we stand together. Namo buddhaya jayang verang pasavati dukkhang seti para. Homage to the Buddha. Victory begets enmity. Chaap tum janda hai, na ke sade pesto, sachon aur esa. Not the coat that we wear. That truth is above everything, and the highest deed is truthful living. In Revelation 17:5, this church is described as a mother of harlots who is drunk with the blood of martyrs. We read in Revelation 17, verse 2, that she is guilty of fornication with the kings of the earth. In other words, she continually seeks state power to enforce her policies. Thus, we see her in the Congress of the United States trying to affect and control policy, as well as addressing and trying to affect the policy of the United Nations through the socialist environmental encyclical recently released by Pope Francis. This year, an event is planned in Washington, D.C., where they want to bring together all the religions. It is dubbed the largest Christian gathering in American history, with over one million Christians gathered. The Pope will be headlining this event, and the idea is to unite all the religions. Hillsong, a Pentecostal megachurch based in Australia, will be presenting and is contractually aligned with the world and with Hollywood, and the Church of Stars like Justin Bieber. Kirk Franklin is also performing at this event, and he defends working with Kanye West, who said the following. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a Happy Meal. Many of the people on the list for Together 2016 are also on the list for another event in September called The Gathering 2016. Nick Hall, who will be speaking at both events and is the organizer of Together 2016, said the following. I think God is already doing the wave. I just think it's happening in different corners and we've been divided. We got this movement here and this denomination here and that group here and they're all great things but we don't even know about each other because we don't have the same name on our sign. 
And so on July 16th, we're gonna see all of these waves collide. Catholics and Lutherans and, and Evangelicals and Charismatics literally rallying across the nation saying, you know what, we may not say the same things, but we're on the same team. We're lifting up Jesus and we're gonna saturate this nation. Man, that could change the world. So the idea of unity, as we've seen, is on the point that fundamentalism is dangerous, but is also on the idea of bringing another spirit into the church, the spirit of devils, which will be labeled as the spirit of God. Take back, redeem what belongs to you. We are Catholics. Hey, get out of God's way. Quit blocking God's bridges, or God's gonna shoot you if I don't. I refuse. With any of you out there, don't even call me if you want to argue doctrine, if you want to straighten somebody out over here, if you want to criticize Ken Coben for his preaching on phase or dad and Hagen. Get out of my life! I don't want to even talk to you or hear you. Several people that I know have criticized. Some of them are dead right today in an early grave because of it, and there's more than one of them got cancer. I've looked for one verse in the Bible, I just can't seem to find it. One verse that said, if you don't like them, kill them. I really wish I could find it. And many will be proclaiming that they are receiving large outpourings of it through signs and miracles everywhere. But God is not in these things. Benedict, he said to all the charismatic leaders, charismatic Catholics, publicly, he said this in Italian to them. He said, you charismatics, you are the hope of the church. Long life for the charismatics. Amen! Amen! After barely 30 minutes, the church resembles a battleground. As you can see, people are quite literally dropping to the floor like flies. Whether or not you believe this is the work of God or the Holy Spirit, it is a truly bizarre sight. Many of these people will stay like this for quite a few hours yet. Just, just for some of you, just an assurance, this is not self-indulgence. This is the Lord, and we need this to go out and to do the things God's calling us to do, to reach the poor and the oppressed. This is not self-indulgence. This is not biblical unity. Though they may be of one accord, the accord is thus. I wish God would give me a Holy Ghost machine gun. I'll blow your head off. The protest is over. The protest is over. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 4 and verse 13 that we are to have a unity of faith. The Bible also tells us in Romans 10 and verse 13 that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So certainly the Pope and the rest of these religions are not uniting in this faith since the Pope is attacking fundamentalism, saying that those who teach a literal interpretation of scriptures are dangerous. We must be specially attentive to every type of fundamentalism. And now, instead of protesting the abominations that were done during the Dark Ages, the churches that were once Protestant, including even the Lutheran churches, are now uniting with the Roman Catholic Church. We are sharing free booklets for anyone who would like copies. Also, check out the website, thethirdangelsmessage.com, for more. There's many articles on that site that you can see. Until next time, be sure to like and subscribe for more.